So starting with the introduction, amylans hernia is a rare type of inguinal hernia in which the appendix is located within the hernial sac. This is seen in about 1% of all the hernias and even more rare in adult population. Preoperative diagnosis is reported in only a handful of the cases previously. Delay in the diagnosis could lead to inflammation of the appendix and subsequent perforation and abscess formation. Surgical management can change when the surgeon finds the presence of an inflamed appendix within the hernial sac. Therefore, preoperative diagnosis of amyland hernia can be made with CT, through which imaging will play an important role in surgical management. So the objectives of the study is to demonstrate a rare case of uncomplicated amyland hernia in a 62-year-old male. So starting with history of presenting illness, this 62-year-old male came to the emergency department with complaints of pain and swelling in the right inguinal region since one month, which was aggravated since last five to six days. He was a known case of chronic kidney disease. On clinical uh, examination, they diagnosed him with indirect right inguinal scrotal hernia. Since the pain was disproportionately more, they decided to go ahead with a CT scan before taking the patient for surgery. Since the patient was a uh, known case of chronic kidney disease, they couldn't go ahead with the contrast study. Only plain abdominal scan was done. So these are axial images of the abdomen and pelvis. We can see the ileal cecal junction. This is the cecum. This is the ileal loop occupying the right ileal region. As we go further down, we can see moderate degree free fluid in the abdominal and pelvis which can be attributed to the kidney disease and we can see the cecum occupying the right alec fossa. Moving further down we can see appendix with intraluminal air and ascitic fluid going into the right inguinal hernial sac. Moving further down we can appreciate the right inguinal hernia with the appendix. The last image we can see the ascitic fluid within the hernial sac. On coronal images, we can appreciate the findings clearly. This is the ileocecal junction and this is the appendix which is seen going right into the right inguinal hernial sac. We also did ultrasound in this patient in which we could clearly see the appendix going into the hernial sac. There were no signs of inflammation. Even the maximum diameter was coming out to be 4.5 mm only. We can also see one tiny appendiculus within it. Coming to the discussion, inguinal hernia is the most common type of hernia. The contents of the hernial sac may vary from case to case. In most of the cases, the content is omentum with or without small bowel loops. Aminal hernia or presence of appendix within the inguinal hernial sac is rare. The incidence of one person. Further presence of inflamed appendix within the hernial sac is very rare with an incidence of 1 1 person. There is an increased propensity to develop appendicitis if the neck of the sac is small, which could lead to compression of the appendix at the level of the neck. There is increased propensity also if there is impaired vascular supply leading to infection. There are many different types of unusual hernias. The presence of mechal diverticulum within the hernial sac is called Littles hernia. The presence of the portion of the bowel wall within the hernial sac is called Richter's hernia and presence of appendix within the femoral canal is called de garen goat hernia. Similar to our case, amyland hernia is usually found in the right side, is more common in males and more commonly present as in, uh, indirect inguinal scrotal hernia. Although amyland hernia would be mostly seen in the right side due to presence of an appendix on the right side, left side amyland hernias have also been reported in the past. This can occur due to gut malrotation, situs inversus and a very mobile cecal. Aminant hernia is three times more likely to be seen in pediatric population than adult population with the presence of patent processus vaginalis. Aminant hernia is classified into four types based on the presence of pendicular inflammation, associated peritonitis or any other abdominal pathology by Lozenov and Basin. Surgical management depends upon the type of amyland hernia. Type 1 is normal appendix in an inguinal hernia sac. Type 2 is acute appendicitis in an inguinal hernia without abdominal sepsis. 
Type 3 is acute appendicitis in inguinal hernia with abdominal wall or peritoneal sepsis. And type 4 is acute appendicitis in inguinal hernia with abdominal pathology. In type 1, we only do hernia reduction and mesh repair. In type 2, we do appendicectomy and prime repair of the hernia without mesh. In th type 3, we do laparotomy, appendicectomy and prime repair without mesh. And type 4, manage as type 1 to 3 and investigate pathology as needed. So imaging plays an important role in diagnosing amyland hernia. The ultrasound features of amyland hernia are presence of a non-compressible dilated blind ending bowel loop with a luminal diameter of more than 7.2 m within the inguinal canal with or without surrounding inflammation. In CT, signs of amyland hernia are the presence of appendix within the inguinal canal without or with inflammation. Signs of the inflamed appendix are increased luminal diameter with associated periappendicular fat stranding and fluid collection, associated cecal thickening and presence of appendicolith in few cases. The preoperative diagnosis of amyland hernia has been reported in only a handful of the cases. Most of the time, it is diagnosed intraoperatively. The reason for this is preoperative imaging investigations are not routinely requ requested by the surgeons, but preoperative CT can give valuable information regarding the contents of the hernia sac. Various complications of amyland hernia have been reported in the literature. Examples of such cases previously reported being abdominal abscess, secondary to a perforated appendix, perforated appendix with a periappendicial abscess, incarcerated right inguinal hernia containing a perforated appendix along with an inflamed right testicle and somatic cord. Therefore, the surgeons should be aware of such complications. Preoperative CT scans could be done routinely to rule out complications and help in further management. So concluding, preoperative CT abdomen pelvis can diagnose amyland hernia with certainty to rule out complications and guide the surgeon in planning the operation. These were the references which I used. Thank you.